Today, we're looking at a blue ink by Camlin, Royal Blue. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. Down below there's timestamps so that if there's only certain things you're interested, you can skip around to it. But if you've got the time, I would appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you like fountain pen ink reviews and are new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Jinhao 51A with a fine nib, wrote with it for a day, and used it to take the notes for this video. This first writing sample is done with a standard set of paper, Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Now, there are additional writing samples that will occur later. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I think the only way to really get this ink is in bottle form, and if you purchase it, it comes in a box that looks like this, which contains a bottle that looks like this, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, very light. I don't like it that blue at all, but the 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is incredibly dark compared to the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, nine seconds to dry. The medium is a little bit lighter than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, and it does offer some shade. Like quick starts a little darker, gets slightly lighter, and then darker again. Thus, starts lighter and gets darker, but the shade difference isn't as big. You see it more with jump. It goes from a mid-tone to a light tone to a very dark tone. 14 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine does show some color variation far left to far right, although I'm not really seeing it here. The medium shows much more, which is the reason it's even easier to see in the writing sample. Tomoy River. No bleeding. Not too bad on the ghosting, even less ghosting than normal for Tomoy River. The 1.1 stub has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is darker than the stub, to say the least, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 16 seconds to dry. The medium is even darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 35 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, still too light, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit darker than the stub, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, seven seconds to dry. Medium is quite a bit darker than the extra fine, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 11 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for the extra fine shows us a lot of color variation, although we're really not getting it in the writing sample. The medium shows us none, and we got none. I agree with Vita. I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we do see is a line on the bottom that looks like it's got something that wants to be able to hang around. And it doesn't quite look like quite a blue line. It's got maybe a slight purpley tinge to it. Now that pushes its way up and we really get the blue and it's a nice dark blue. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that purpley tinge to the line is a little more there and the line is more there. Now that looks like the blue is really pushing up. We're seeing some white of the filter paper showing some separation and then the blue comes in at the top. So it does make you think that there may be some hold on for this ink. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it does spread from about an extra fine to a fine. There is some feathering that's occurring on the G and the H, but for the most part, it's holding up pretty well to being hit with the highlighter. Water is starting to move a lot of this ink around. 
I don't think it's going to be quite enough. It's really got a lot of darker blues still there. But Pen Flush is really reactivating and lifting. Now that was only 30 seconds, and we're really starting to get the hints of the white of the paper to come through, which makes me say that Pen Flush is all that I'm going to need to get this out of my pen. If I didn't and I needed to go to the one-third bleach solution, it completely obliterates it, removing it from the paper. Now if you use the one-third bleach solution, just make sure that you wash your pen with water after so you don't rust your metal bits. I test the viscosity or flow using a tilt test, which I'm going to link the video showing how I do that. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Camlin's Royal Blue has a viscosity of 1.53, making this a very wet ink. Very wet. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Camlin's Royal Blue has an average dry time of 15 seconds, making it normal. Because I like the blue that I get with Camlin's Royal Blue from a wet pen, I really wanted something that brought a great color to this nice dark blue. I wanted a pink, like Diamine's pink, because it's named pink. The second writing sample is done on Leustrom 1917, a composition notebook, and Moji paper. Here we're looking at Leustrom 1917 journals. The... oops. No bleeding, no ghosting. Almost jumped right past that. The 1.1 stub has no feather spread, halo sheen, shade, or interesting tones. Really too light to be comfortable. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub and still honestly too light. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry. Medium is a lot darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine does show us some color variation, although we're really not getting it, and it's too light anyway. The medium, no color variation, and we really didn't get any color variation. Composition notebook, like you would use in school, in lab. Now we have no bleeding, we have very minor ghosting on the medium, really nothing on the extra fine. The medium at the top has no feather, but it does have some spread. No halo sheen or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than we got with the stub. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us we should have some color variation on the extra fine, and even the darker part of the scrubby is too light for me to be happy with. And last up is Moji Notebooks. No bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 stub is still too light to use. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit darker than the stub. Still too light for me, but you can read it comfortably. No feather spread, halo sheen. There's spots of shading like the K in quick, the B in brown, the X in fox. Some first and last letters are a little bit darker. Six seconds to dry. Medium is quite a bit darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The scrubby of the extra fine shows us some color variation, and we do see some at the beginning and ends of words. Scrubby of the medium shows us none, and we got none, and that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Camlin's Royal Blue? This is a good standard blue ink to use, and it is very inexpensive. Now, it offers no shading, but it does vary tone depending on what nib you choose. So what pen and nib would give the best writing experience? Definitely a wetter pen putting a darker blue down. I didn't care for its lighter version from drier pens. Now, a wet medium absolutely looks fantastic. If you've made it this far, and according to my analytics, 50% of you aren't, and you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, I would invite you to subscribe, and thanks for watching.